So here's the deal. When you get your mower uh, from your dealer, you know, you're going to, more than likely, you're going to have a side shoot like this, right? Well, what they did at grassflap.com, this is the 42B installation guide for walk-behinds. A lot of it's going to be similar wherever you go. So if you did a search for grass flap or OCDC shoot blocker or best shoot blocker or anything like that, and you found my video, um, this is going to be the installation portion of using this, you know, this grass flap. All right, so again, this is for a walk behind, the 42B, uh, but this is going to be a general install for just about most of their models. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to take off your factory side sheet. And uh, it comes with a couple carriage bolts usually. On my mower it does. This, is, this has the no hole, the no drill, um, no drill hole mount base thing. That was a little bit confusing. Uh, I wasn't putting it on right and then I had to take a step back. I had to get smarter than the machine and I figured it out. Uh, so you take your shoot off, you know, you got a couple bolts, takes the shoot off with the, with the base. All right, get that out of your way. And this is the no holes mount. The, the no, you don't have to drill holes to mount this for these newer models. Okay. All right. This is the pedal it comes with. So this is going to mount like this to the back of your mower and your foot hits it this way. All right. This is the plate that mounts to the lawn mower to the back where like a, Vel a Velky, Sulky, whatever goes. You got two holes that are already drilled on my model. Some you might have to drill yourself. But um, they just line up right here. You got a top one for the carriage bolt. And you got this bottom one here. They take the 5 16 size. Again, that's something that we have to talk about. So you put two bolts here. One here and here goes into the frame of the mower and this one sits up above and that gives you good stability and this is for your cable. This will install later. Alright? Why not on that? Also comes with a 50 inch cable. Comes with your clevis pins and everything that you need for the cable. Comes with some hardware, a couple zip ties, um, and of course the grass flap base. Uh, the, the, the flap itself with the base already mounted here. So really simple what you do here. All right, let me show you guys real quick. This is where your spring's going to go, right here, okay? And this right here, for shipping purposes, it's shipped like this. But you're going to take this bolt out at any time. You can take this bolt out right here and put it where the hole is here and make that unit one. We can go ahead and do that right now. All right, this is like skipping ahead a few steps, but that's okay. You're going to do it anyways. You just take this bolt loose. They might have it snug a little bit. Stand this up. Make sure the spring's on the right side. Put the bolt back through. You don't have to make it tight at this time. Just get it back through here. Move it up about halfway. See how it's slotted right here? So just move it up about halfway, and now you've got your chute ready to be mounted to the base. And then when it's mounted to the base, open, close. And your spring later will be put to this little swivel right here, and that spring will hold it closed. And then stretches the spring, and then pop, holds it open. One spring, holds it closed, holds it open smart how they did that. So that's how you do that there and then this is an adjustment for your spring. Okay. If you got noodle arms and you're not going to be able to stretch this spring onto this little bushing right here, then loosen this bolt up right here by pulling tight down on the spring and loosening this bolt up with probably a 7 16. That'll move the spring down, make it easier to put on here, then you can tighten it up. You know, if you got noodle arms. Not very important right now. We'll figure that out later. You have two slots right here that allows this to move on the no drill base back and forth. And what that's going to do is it's going to seal it to your deck right there. If you put this on and you have it sticking too far out, then you're going to have a lot of seepage. You don't want seepage, okay? You want it to be flush, just like that. 
So then when you open it, it opens, and when you close it, it's flush. And the spring holds it nice and snug against your, your mower deck, okay? So those are the slots that you're going to use to adjust, all right? This is the no holes base that's going to be mounted here that mounts this to this. So to mount this to this, this isn't the easiest thing to do. This is something that messed me up. When you go to put this on, you got a slot right underneath here. There's a little slot right here. See that? And there's a slot here. Okay? You got a downward dip in your factory right here, and you got a downward dip right here. You got this ear, and you got this ear. These ears go into this dip, and these little dips, or these little ears slide into these slots. All right? If you don't do that, and you think you're okay by just doing it like this, then what happens is the base is angled. All right? So you will have to take this and line it up the best you can, and you're going to have to tap it into place. All right? Once you get this square part here pretty much in line with the round hole of your mower, take the hardware that you used to remove your original flap, your original side chute, put it in here. It's just enough to go through. Put your nut on it. Okay, this took me a while to do because there was no space here. This wouldn't line up. And finally, I beat it. And, and then I was able to get it. So get this started, all right, and then get the next one started. Again, you might have to tap it a little. It's a lawn mower. Tap the damn thing. Quit being so scared. All right, get your bolt in there. Get it lined up. Get the nut on there. Once you do all that, 14 millimeter from my size mower, wrench these down. When you wrench these down, you may not fill all the gap in. And if that happens, then you got to keep on beating on it with the hammer until you have it nice and flush. This no hole, no drill mount um, needs to be properly mounted. This is what's going to keep your grass flap from moving, shaking, and shimmying while you're mowing. All right, so nice and tight. If you have to, use a hammer and beat it. Don't be scared, it's a lawnmower. Your brand new lawnmower is gonna look like a used piece of shit in a month if you got a business. So don't worry about it. There you go, nice and tight. And I wanna show you the end result. There, and there. Now look at this. See how the ears are underneath? There's just, I mean, there's zero tolerance right there. Zero tolerance right there. All right, this thing's not going anywhere. If you have an old mower and you bought this chute, there's a very good possibility these little ears up here could be damaged. You might have hit fence posts, concrete posts, something that kind of closed that gap up. You may need to take a big pry bar and a hammer and open that little gap up, all right? Open the gap up, get this thing, get the hardware in, get it lined up, get it tight, and wrench it down, and don't be afraid to use a hammer to convince it to do what you need it to do, which is be nice and snug. Once you have this set up, all right, this to me was the hardest part of the whole install. Now we're going to start getting into installing the flap itself, grass flap, and the hardware using the hardware that was supplied with the unit. Now here's the deal. I don't think, I'm, it's not their fault, but they sent me the wrong hardware. Um, they sent me the hardware for a different model, and here's what happened. They sent me three of these hex heads, okay? And they sent me four of these 3 8 carriage bolts. 
These are 5 sixteenths hex heads. Let me show you something. These 3 eighths carriage bolts do not fit here in the pedal. Okay? And why do I bring that up? Because what you might find in your instructions, sorry, which I found in my instructions was to use these bolts to mount here to your adjustable slide here. Well, when you do that, that takes two of the three away, leaving you one. So how are you going to mount the pedal? Because the three-eighths don't fit. So I mounted it the way it, the instruction said to mount it, which was with these two in the slots right here going from the bottom up. I think his video even showed that. That's how confused I got. I'm like, man, something's not right. But I followed the instructions. The next day I called David at Grass Flap and I said, David, this is what I found out. This is what I got. Did I do something wrong? And he said, no, the hardware we should have included with your mower, with this model, we should have included um, more of these. The solution, which I agreed with, was to take the two three-eighths that I don't need and drop them from the top. So the instruction said to use the 5 16s. The solution is use the 3 8 and you'll be fine. If it bothers you, because it's going to be a little bit harder to tighten this, because you can, now you have to do all your motion underneath. Um, if that bothers you, and it, you don't have a wrench that you can use, go to the hardware store and get yourself a couple 5 16 bolts. All right, 5 16 by inch and a half, inch, whatever, one inch is fine. 5 16 by one inch and all thread all the way up with a couple bolts, a couple nuts, and you can do it that way, okay? If it doesn't bother you, then the solution is to use the 3 8 So here's the deal. With the spring out of the way, all you're going to do now is drop this bad boy right on. Okay? That's it. Now, remember we discussed it not being out here and not being in. You want it perfectly flush, right? Perfect. Okay? Hold it nice and flush against your, your deck. Three eighths. Drop it in. You might have to tap it in a little bit. Okay? There's one. Get the nut. This is where, if you got butter fingers, fat fingers, you're not good with hardware or and stuff like that, and you can't get this started, then this then just stop what you're doing right now. Don't get mad. Don't give them a bad review. Just go get a couple 5 16 bolts and drive on. All right, they made the change, but still some of the bags that you get still have this. Uh, but the instructions reflected the change. So that's where I got confused. Not the end of the world. Um, so mounting the, the no drill base was a little bit of a pain because I was I was hesitant to, to hammer my mower. I didn't actually hammer the mower. I hammered the hardware and the, the base that came. I didn't have to hammer my mower. Now uh, 9 16 wrench and tighten these up. I'll do that. I'll be right back Okay, once you've got these two bolts nice and tight and you got good Positive contact then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this spring like we discussed and This can kick a lot of people's butts But you want to take this spring and put it to this side of the bushing here right here You got this bushing so you're gonna take this spring Here and slip it around this and onto there. Now, one way to do it is with a wrench and you come across here, all right? The problem that people have is the wrench gets stuck and then they can't get it off. So what I end up doing is I'll just take 
a pair of pliers and grab it and pull it and slide it over. If that's too hard for you to do, then with tension here on the spring, okay, keeping tension with the spring, that'll lock the bolt right here. You can loosen up the little jam nut back there, loosen this spring up to get it here easier. So you pull this over, get it around onto the bushing. And that's it. All right, now you got this arm right here with that nut and bolt we did right there. You got this spring that moves. So to make sure that this right here clears all parts of your mower, you can loosen this right here. It's going to be a half inch. Loosen this up a little, bring the arm up so the spring clears everything. Tighten it down nice and tight. Okay, this isn't going to go anywhere. It's a non moving part. Once you tighten it, it's done. Now the cable will mount here to here, and when the cable pulls, it'll st stretch the spring to the halfway point right here. And then that's pushing the pedal all the way down. And when you let the pedal off, it the spring then brings it back up. Then when you push the pedal, the cable's here now. It's going to pull the cable back. And I'm just showing you how it works so you understand. Okay? It pulls the cable back. You're pushing the pedal all the way down. Then when you let off the pedal, done. So when you push the pedal all the way down, it bring it moves this to the halfway point and a little bit more so then the spring will take over to the halfway point a little bit more and then the spring takes over that's how it works that's how this mechanism works it's genius it really is it, it's it's really a smart smart little deal here um, you got this is a moving part as long as everything is tight and it's jam nutted which it is then you're good you got this bushing right here you're good to go. So the next thing you do now, pull this cover and start routing your cable. Okay, so the cable, the cable's not hard to install. If you're familiar with bicycles and how bicycles work, it's the same cable type situation for like parking brake or uh, you know the brakes. Okay, this is a, a little slip-on clevis that's going to go up by the pedal. Put that aside. This is a clevis pin and a cotter pin. Obviously, this is as well, but much smaller in diameter, and it's going to work with this bushing. See that bushing right there? And that cotter pin. This and this go to the front with this. This and this and this go to the back. Well, I'm sorry. When I say the front, I mean the pedal, and this goes to the chute blocker. Now, let me show you how this goes together. On your chute itself you got this hole right here okay that's going to take this little bushing will slip into this little hole right here okay and then this little clevis pin is going to go in it and this cotter pin is going to go through it and you spread the cotter pin out to lock it in to do that you need your cable so this is the 50 inch cable that they give you And the cable, just route it through for now. We'll get fancy with it later. Don't want to lose this, so I'm going to take this back out while we're working. Here's the little clevis. Okay, so you got this right here. How do we know it goes? This side goes to the flap because of the size of this to match with the size of this. If you tried putting this on the pedal side, the part that they already have assembled for you, it's not going to match up with the clevis pins and everything. And you can't put that bigger clevis pin on this side because then it's not going to go through this bushing. All right, so the part that they give you already assembled goes to this side. So you got a rubber boot for dirt. Take that rubber boot. 
slide it off, take your jam nut, slide that off. Right here, you're going to take your cable and slide your cable through to the jam nut. You see that? Only the cable can fit and you leave the one jam nut on, slide it through, and then take your jam nut on this side that you just loosened up and tighten it up. Okay? Snug it up. You don't have to make it solid tight, just snug it up for right now. Put your little rubber dirt boot back on and later we're going to lube this, this cable up. So slide this back on to keep dirt off of it from getting in. There's going to be a lot of dirt down at this side of the mower, you know, of course, this is the chute. Okay? So you put that, that back on. Here's your little clevis. Here's that little bushing. See how this is going together now? And your clevis goes right through like that. Here's this. Push it through. Line it up. Cotter pin. Put your cotter pin through. And then split your cotter pin to keep it all together. Somebody's having fun in their hot rod. Alright, now check for all your clearances. Good. Nothing's getting caught up. If you are uh, aviation background and this big tail bothers you with the cotter pin, then you can just take some snips and cut these snips off. That's it. Uh, from here, we'll move into the pedal and we're going to lube this cable up real fast. All right, what we're going to do real quick, we're just going to put a little lubrication into this cable and we're just going to let gravity do the work. So here's a chain lube. This works great for bicycles and stuff like that. It, does, it lubricates, it protects, but it doesn't allow dirt to collect like WD-40. Um, but if all you have is WD-40, then fine. Use WD-40. Um, what you're going to do is just get this little rubber booty thing out of your way. Get to the end of your cable right here where it is the plastic sheath right here and just lubricate it just spray it down a little bit if you have wd-40 that'll work but i don't really recommend it um, something good is like three in one oil that's a thin oil but really that's it now as you use this and because this is going to be higher than this, lube will work its way through. Alright? If you forget to lube it, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. You'll be alright. Every once in a while, periodically, send some grease down here, a little pressurized grease with, with some spray or something. When you service your mower, service your cable, and the cable will last longer. Not that big of a deal. Okay, look, as far as routing the cable, come on guys, common sense has to prevail here. Avoid your moving parts, avoid your pulleys, and avoid anything hot that's going to melt this. So you want to get to the back here where, of course, your um, pedal is going to be. So just route it back here and watch what you put it through. It doesn't matter if I show you what I'm doing or not because your machine is going to be different. You might not want to mount your pedal on the left side or the right side. I'm going to go with the left side um, for now. That's just what I'm going to do. All right. Get this up, get this out of the way, and don't let it interfere with anything, okay? Don't zip tie it just yet until you have it mounted to the pedal and, and the cable's fully adjusted. So hold off on getting too crazy with the zip tie. Just sit it here, you're good to go. Let's go to the pedal. Mounting the pedal's basic common sense for hardware. 
okay? My particular mower and this particular mount model, the 42B, I guess it's called, 42B, um, has these holes right here and these holes right here, I guess for the Xmark Velky. Um, so if you, if you get a Velky, you might have a base on here right now. So just work through the base, okay? Don't take your Velky base off, just work through the base. But what you're looking for now is the base. that they gave you. They gave you this base, right? Here's those two holes I told you about. And then here's these, this right here, okay? You can go this way, you can go this way. Make sure you go the right way, which is going to be, pa pa pa, this way, okay? So you got this and this. One you're gonna mount on your own. And get your bolt on there, get your nut on there. Okay. Now you've got this right here, so maybe it's smarter to do it from the back first and go up. And then this one here, we'll just do the same for uniformity. Just like that. Okay? And then your pedal is slotted. So you put those two just like so. And there's the mount for your cable. So now you take your nuts and bolts and get them started. And you can adjust this pedal up and down to your liking. Uh, if you notice right here, down here, this is pretty much flush, but a little bit lower than the red. You can bring it up just a touch. So it depends on you. I'm gonna leave it as far down as possible because I already know that when I'm walking and I lift my foot up to hit this pedal, I'm gonna hit my knee. So I want this as low as possible and we're gonna see what happens in the future. Uh, so now I'm just gonna tighten this up and I'll be right back. That's it, the pedal's mounted. So now you got the cable, you got this mount right here, this hole, and you got this mount right here, which if you notice, it has that same slot right here. So we already moved the boot off of the end here, right here. So you got these two jam nuts that were just like on the other side, take one off. Okay. Take your cable, push it in, get it in here. And now this is where you want to look what you're doing. Right now I have a problem. I'm hitting my hydro lever right here. So we're going to take this back out. We're going to take this and go above the hydro lever. That's why I never zip anything down, never zip tie anything down, never tighten anything down until you're good. I have the cable going under the engine cabling for the back here, so it's nice, it's not, not going to move, and this is going to give me a nice free range of motion for the cable, not lock it up. Slip that on, put your jam nut back on here, like that. Okay, I'm not going to snug it, I'm just going to hold it, put your little boot back on. Keep the dirt out. And then here's your cable. Your hole. Here's your cable. And then you got those parts that I, sh I showed you these parts earlier, right? So you got this, this mount right here. Okay. See how I did that? See the hole in the slot? See the ball? Just like that, okay? Should pull all your slack. That's all here. That's the door opening and closing. So bring bring this up. Put your clevis in. I tend to put cotter pins and stuff like that on the inside or in the back of things, so the cotter pins don't get caught up on stuff. And then put your cotter pin through. 
You are now mounted. You now have your mount plate, your OCDC grass flap completely installed. Now you just need to line it all up. And for that, we'll spin the machine around. Okay, before we go into adjusting the spring tension so the flap operates correctly, you had these jam nuts that are on the cables, right? And I said, well, don't, don't do anything with those yet until we have everything mounted up and you know everything's going to work. So now we can go ahead and snug these up. So hold the one behind it, hold the one in front of it, and just tighten them down to each other, okay? That's that. And then do the same thing on the flap. Remember the zip ties they gave you? Remember the cable, okay? Find a safe place for the cable zip tie it. You don't want it up here because you don't want the top plate cutting into this. In time it's going to cut into it. Okay, Everything goes below and do the best that you can to avoid your moving parts and your heat. So this right here is a good spot. This right here is a good spot. Nice big curve, no sharp ends, you got metal that needs to move, and there you go, you're done with all of that. Now, here's what you're looking for. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with my foot. How easy I'm, I'm doing this. Just touch it, and there you go. So you can do that, and without momentum, it just stops right there. But if you hit it with a little bit of speed, see? I don't know. Let's see how it works in the yard. I mean, it seems okay. I want to tighten the spring up even more. I'm just going to mess with the spring tension a little bit here and there, and we'll figure it out as we go. But that's an installation on the Xmark Turf Tracer. Pretty, uh, pretty much relatively the same for most of your walk-behind mowers. So I hope this video helps you out. We'll do reviews as we go, but for right now, I think it's a really good quality product. I spoke with Dave from uh, grass flap, uh, he was a big help when I had issues with the hardware. We figured out what happened, so that was really cool. So, I think it's a really good product. Uh, again, not endorsed, not sponsored, wasn't given a discount, didn't even know I ordered it. I ordered it, I called him yesterday and said, Hey, or two days ago, yesterday, and said, Hey, uh, got your product, really like it, got some issues, let's figure it out. And we did. So, uh, 300 bucks shipped to my door. Got to me in two days. Ordered it Sunday morning or Saturday morning. Got it Wednesday morning. So Monday, Tuesday, got it on the third day. Outstanding. Uh, so if you're interested, there you go. No hardware, no, no stuff hanging to get stuck on tree limbs or anything like that. You just got that one pedal to work with. And uh, I think that's pretty neat. So there you go. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later. Hope we helped you out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Uh, we do some really cool things here. Alright, we'll see you later. Tell me about the whistles. The whistles.